Okay, number one. Leadership is not always what you do, but how you do it. Leadership is not always what you do, but how you do it. And we are talking about how you treat people, how you manage people, how you embrace humility. Because some people will carry that title, leadership, I am the leader. I am the chosen one. I am the one that I have the direct contact to bishops, so people have to understand that I know that. And now we're carrying the title. But it's not always what you do, but how you do it. Number four, leaders do what needs to be done. This one is a hard one. Because when you are a leader, to be told what to do so that you do what needs to be done <coughs> is sometimes difficult. There's this thing they call our ego that just says, well, you know, I mean, I'm the leader, so you know, I can do it when I want to do it, and I'll do it when I need to do it. But as leaders, as I said, we have to live by example. So if people are seeing that you are one that takes direction and do what you need to do, then they'll be able to follow you and do what you need, what needs to be done in I your organization. I wanted to remind you as leaders is people will follow you when they believe in you. People will follow you when they believe in you. Now the question is, what do you mean? How do they believe in me? They want you, they want to know that you listen to their radio station more than they listen to your radio station. We're not talking about Star FM. We are not talking about Zimbabwe Radio. We are talking about two radio stations. The first one is what's in it for you. W I I F. Why? W-I-I-F-Y. What's in it for you? The other radio station is W-I-I-F-M. What's in it for me? So for the people, if you are a minister, a leader standing up here, it's what's in it for you, for them, not for me. So if you're one person that says, well, what's in it for me? I want to make sure that I have a congregation that is so many people, and I want to make sure that, you know, we have our tithings and monies, and we have this big church, and we have, and, and it's all about me and my name going far. That's not the radio station that, you know, will make them follow you. <coughs> they want to know if you're listening to their radio station, and that radio share station is saying, what's in it for you? So guess what? Bishop wanted to know what's in it for you. He put together this leadership conference, and it takes a risk to take a life coach and throw them in the schedule with apostles and bishops and anointed men. It takes a man with a heart that says, you know, I don't want my leaders, my flock, the people that will follow me with this visionary to be left behind. I want them to hear everything and to get all the information and to get all the education that it will take. So I give you honor and praise for having that vision and allowing yourself to open yourself up to say, you know what, we are going to have all of them, despite whether they are ministers or apostles that will stand before you. You know, helping people find their passions. So if anything, that's another training of, you know, a whole day of doing passion tests where we do exercises and, and, and everything that by the end of the day, what the whole um, gist of that training is, by the end of the three day training, sometimes it's three days, sometimes it's three hours, you know, training that we did. But by the end of that, you find what it is that your passion is. That means everything that you do in your life, any decision that you make in your life, if it's not fitting in with that passion of yours, you're not even questioning whether you should say yes or no. It's a no. If it's not falling into the things that I said I want to do with my life, then I'm sorry, I can't do it. And then if it's a yes, you, you look at your list, or remember your list and say, uh, maybe I should, 
attend this training because then that's part of my passion. So that's how that whole buzz is going about, you know, um, doing the passion test. Um, free, when you do the business and build your business, one of the things that you struggle with is doing it for free and doing it for money. Right? Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, huh. see, you have to start somewhere. People have to know you. I remember the CDs that you have there, when I brought them and we were preparing them at the house, I have nieces that are in their 20s and 30s that are looking for work and they go, Auntie, can they be $2? And I said, no. What, a dollar? I said, no. Why? Because people have to buy something. And, and I understand that concept, but then when you're doing a business, you don't, you, you want people to know you first. Okay, good, thank you. You want people to know you first. You want people to know what you do first. <laughs> and because there's this radio stations um, that I know all of you listen to. <laughs> all right, my ghost wants to know. There's this radio stations that I know most of you listen to. And it's W W I I F M. Right? What's that radio station? What's in it for me? W I I F M. What's in it for me? So, what that means is everyone wants to know what's in it for me. If I'm coming to buy your stuff, even if I'm paying a dollar or two dollars, what's in it for me? What is it that you do for me that will change my life or that will make a difference in my life? So if you start by selling and people don't understand what it is that you're selling, then most likely you're not going to get a sale for one. So, and, and that's where that decision of should I make it free or should I make it for money comes in. There's a young man, his name is Phil Mudavan. He's in Germany. He sees me on Facebook and he inboxes me and he says, Doc, I can change your whole profile and, and build you new business cards, new, you, you know, whatever, however you want to be branded, I can brand you. And I said, uh, what do you mean, have you done this before? You know, this is just from nowhere. He sends me this whole profile that he did before, and oh my lord, it is, you know, like, wow. I said, sure. There is no such thing as risk-free. Everything you do and don't do will inherit a risk. It's all a risk. No matter how smart you are, no matter how brilliant, how rich, how poor you are, no matter what it is that you do, you're going to make mistakes. So take the risk anyway. See, I had to get out of the box with this one. Is everybody ready? Yeah. An effective leader knows that money gives you options. See, if you're gonna be, you know, receiving some rain next year, I would be writing this one in what we called capital letters. Money gives you options. Remember, life is a beautiful struggle. It's a beautiful struggle. Remember, I said struggle. Think of that someone who's living on the streets that doesn't have a place to live anymore. And when you're tired and complaining about your job that you're doing, Think of that unemployed person, the person who's disabled, who wished they had a job. But before you think of pointing the finger and condemning another, remember that nobody's perfect. We all have faults. I wish you the best. And thank you.